Okay. Last lecture we have seen the meaning of relation. Today we will begin with function. Some of the relations are going to be functions. Function is going to be subset of all possible relations from set A to set B. So what is the real difference between relation and function we will observe and function is going to be important to us in further discussion because it is a relation with some specific rules. Relation does not follow any rule. You can take any subset of A cross B and you can call it as relation. However, in function, we have to follow certain rules and in the definition, we have to capture those rules. Let A and B be two non-empty sets. If every element of set A is related to one and only one, we can use word unique element of set B. then such relation is called function. Okay, two things are important. Every element of set A is important and it has to be related to unique element of set B. That is what the function is. And we normally give that example of price list of the products in a shop. If somebody wants to function well, you need to have a proper price list. That price list is going to be your function. Okay. So as far as Diagram is concerned, set A, set B, elements in set A, every element must release an arrow. And only one arrow from every element in set A. And every element in set A is BZ releasing error. I mean, it's related to somebody or the other in set B. You all know this. Okay, so this is function. We need to check two things. One, all the elements in A are pre images of some mapping F. This is mapping F, some rule by which you are connecting elements of A to B. And so every element in set A is a pre-image under F. And there is a unique image for every pre-image. These are the two things. So every element in A and unique image in B. These are the two things that you have to constantly keep in mind and then and then only it will be function otherwise it is not function it will be a relation so based on the number of elements in a number of elements in b there are four types of functions this red is bad first into function.
if a function f from a to b is such that there is at least one element in set b which is not the which is not the f image of any element in a okay so you need to have at least one element in set b who is not image of any element in a so i think the diagram that i have drawn here is into function because 5 is not image of anybody 3 is not image of anybody but there should be at least one element in set b such that it is not image of any element in a then we call it as into and as english meaning of into is concerned if you look at the codomain then you are entering into the codomain not that every element in codomain is busy some of them are not busy so you are getting into and uh, next is to undo of course the change will be that every element in set b is a image of some element or the other in set a okay so let us write it correctly undo is also called if the function f if a function f from a to b is such that each element of set b is the f image of at least one element in a now this at least one element in a Uh, is okay i mean because you can have many elements in a having the same image many products in the shop may have the same price that is okay so suppose you have a b c d and code open contents on the under it rupees everybody is connected to 100 this is on to okay because each element of set b is a f image of at least one element in set a so that is surjective on to so these two are by looking at codon how elements in codomain look like are they all images or they are not all images okay next is one one
which is also called injective. Every element of setting every element of set A must have different F image in set B. Okay, so this particular diagram is not acceptable in this. Every element of set A must have different element, different image in set B. See, yeah. okay, and the fourth one is many one. The function f, the function f from a to b is many one. If at least one element of b is f image of more than one element of set a. Okay. Now, these two are the types of arrows, types of arrows. This is typically codomain, whether you have free element in codomain or not. Basically, it depends whether it is on to or into. Now, and again, element in codomain, if it is receiving one arrow or more than one arrow, That is what is one one or many one. So there are four types, and then there will be combination. I mean, these two will never be together. A function is into and onto is not possible. Function is one one and many one is not possible. Therefore, there will be total four possibilities: one from set one and one from set two. So there are total four types of functions which are combinations into one one into let us list one one into one one onto many one into and many one onto When it is one one onto, it is injective and surjective. Also put together is called bijective. Okay, so this might be a little more important to us than remaining these two.
so having understood the definitions of all four in creating definitions or the meaning for 11 into 11 onto many one into many one onto should be easy maybe i will wait for some time and make sure that you complete that. write down your own definition of what do you mean by 11 into what do you mean by 11 onto and so on okay having understood the four types of functions and their four combinations let us try to find out number of functions and number of special functions so let set a has normally let me tell you all the convention suppose we have a function from a to b f a to b set a is domain codomain the independent variable is from domain so normally it is x after you process x under f you get dependent variable so codomain normally is represented by y and therefore this is this is the diagram and this is the algebra y is equal to f of x that is the algebra you put x in the machine you get y out by processing defined by f okay that is what is function okay there is something called range you are aware of all the values in codomain all elements set of all elements in codomain which are images of some element in domain under f okay so on to is something which has a range equal to codomain does not have any element which is not the image therefore when range equals codomain equals means both the sets are same it is on to else into okay and if if it is injective or one one then if f of x equals f of y i mean two elements or if f, f of x1 equals f of x2 implies x1 equals x2 that is what is the meaning of one one if image of x1 and x2 is same then x1 and x2 themselves are same that is one one that is one way of algebraically handling one one function geometrically handling one one function is horizontal line test if you have been given some graph of function x comma y check whether horizontal line intersects the curve at two points or one if more than one then it is not one one okay this is not one one function because for x1 the value of the function is something same as that of x2 maybe at x3 also okay so that is the graph horizontal line test is if the curve intersects horizontal line in only one point then it is one and maybe once we 
learn differential calculus derivative of the function with respect to x is either increasing or is greater than 0 or less than 0 for all x uh, yeah, either it is strictly increasing or increasing for all x it is i mean you will not have derivative slope of tangent sometimes positive sometimes negative if it is positive i mean at one point it can be zero also if it is y is equal to x cube then at one point derivative is zero but that is the only point so i think you understood what i mean to say by this you take derivative and simultaneously for a two values of x you will not have derivative positive positive as well as negative So we will understand this once we are into differential calculus, derivatives, etc. But one one, I mean, you may end up where you are supposed to solve and prove that the function is one one. This is the algebra that will be useful to you. Okay. So question set A as x1, x2, xn elements. Set B as y1, y2, y r elements. Then question one, total number of functions. Question two, total number of one one functions. Question three. Total number of many one functions. Question four. Total number of constant functions. Question five, total number of onto functions. Question six, total number of into functions and question seven total number of one one on two functions. Hello? Start doing this, and I think it is going to be difficult for me to check unless you show me one by one. But okay, this time I will not check, I will write it, I will write the answers after some time. You cross check your answers. 
but you let me know once you are finished with all seven so that when more than half students will finish i will start writing the answers Okay, if there are R elements in codomain and N elements in domain, every element in domain, I mean the set is going to look like this, function is going to look like this, ordered pair where x1 is sitting and waiting for y value, x2 is sitting and waiting for y value x n is sitting and waiting for y value. So for the first place we have r choices from codomain. For second place we have r choices and for third place we have r choices and for nth place we have r choices. Therefore r into r into r into r r raised to n. Total number of functions r raised to n. Now total number of 1 1 functions, 1 element from domain is getting connected to only 1 element in codomain, right? So here if r is greater than n then we can have that number in place for 1 1. If r is less than n, then 1 1 is going to be 0. If r is less than n, answer is 0 because we want at least r elements in codomain for having 1 1. Okay r or greater than r. So out of r or greater than r, so if r is greater than or equal to n, out of r or greater than elements, r elements in B, you choose n elements. And they will get permuted amongst themselves in n factorial ways and assigned to x1, x2, x3, xn, that many 1, 1 functions will be there. So the answer is into n factorial. This is the answer for first, this is the answer for second, and this is the answer for second. If you are not understood, you should ask them. If r is greater than or equal to n, then choose our elements and put them in an order and connect one to one. So how many permutations of n elements that you choose from our elements? n factorial permutations. Therefore, r choose n into n factorial is number of one. So one one and many one are going to be complements of each other. Therefore, number of many one functions if r is greater than or equal to n, the number of many one functions will be r raised to n minus r choose n into n factorial. Okay. And if r is less than n, equal to r raised to n, that many one one functions. Okay. Easy. Total number of constant functions. I mean, all of them connected to y1, that is one constant function. All of them are connected to y2, that is another constant function. And therefore, total number of constant functions is going to be r. Okay, now we have done this problem number of onto functions in combinatorics. But let us do it again. Inclusion, exclusion. Ah, we are entering. 
First functions are raised to n. Now, of course, we will do it for two cases when r is greater than or equal to n if let me change color if r is greater than or equal to n then on two functions is r raised to n minus total number of functions minus not on two because of one not on two because of one element you can choose one element in R, choose one ways, and that element is not receiving an arrow, therefore R minus one raised to N. Plus, because of two elements, R choose two, R minus two, bracket raised to N plus dot 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 right sorry this is only for r is greater than n when r is equal to n the answer is going to be easy r is greater than n. if r is equal to n then answer is r factorial Now this is this need to be explained why okay and if r is less than are chukla gai tari if r is less than n at least it is written like this and it is correct r is less than n then this is the answer r is equal to n then r factorial and if r is greater than n of course there will not be any on to function always some element or the other will remain without receiving an arrow Okay, so this is what is one two functions. Into is going to be number of into functions is going to be complement of one two functions. Therefore, if r is less than or equal to n, the number of into functions will be r is r is to n minus this long chain therefore r choose 1 r minus 1 raised to n minus r choose 2 r minus 2 raised to oh r minus 1 raised to n ah, correct r minus 2 raised to n plus dot 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 this is going to be number of in two functions and if r is greater than n then the answer will be r raised to n because r raised to n minus 0 okay and then total number of 1 1 on 2 functions n factorial okay these are the answers you cross check your answers. Order function. Function f is r if f of opposite of x is equal to opposite of f of x.
even function if f of opposite of x is equal to f of x. Example, f of x is equal to sin x. Out of function. So symmetric about origin. f of x is equal to cos x symmetric about y axis question can we have function symmetric about x-axis. Can we have a function symmetric about x-axis? No. Vertical line test. Y square is equal to 4 ax if A is positive, it opens like this. This is a parabola and it fails when you draw a vertical line. For one value of x1, you have two values of y1. And hence, it does not follow the definition of function. And hence, this is not function. And therefore, function symmetric about x axis you won't get. I mean, you will have curve symmetric about x axis, but whether that curve is a function or not depends. Now, you can, I mean, if you, you are really interested in this function, then you can write it like this y is equal to 2 root a into root x as upper part of the curve. Then it is a function, yes. Or maybe Another function y is equal to opposite of 2 root a root x, then it is lower part of the function. So you need to trim those arms and then you can convert it into a function. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Okay, let us learn few more types of functions, algebraic functions. The first is polynomial. y is equal to f of x is equal to a naught plus a one x square plus dot 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 plus a n x raised to n where a n is not equal to a i belongs to r and a n not equal to zero. These are the most friendly functions, polynomial functions. Second, Fractional rational functions. They look like f of x is equal to polynomial of x in numerator of one polynomial of x in the denominator. So, the ratio of two polynomials provided for all values of x where of x is 0, it is not defined. For all values of x, q of x is equal to 0. We will say that f of x is defined for all values of x where q of x is not equal to 0. The denominator cannot be 
zero. Okay, so that is those kinds of functions are called fractional rational functions. Then we have irrational functions. I mean, these are just the names. You need not have to remember them also. Uh, the, this example f of x is equal to root x. Power is irrational. Fourth, no, not fourth. Algebraic are done. Transcendental functions. First, exponential functions. Y is equal to f of x is equal to a raised to x. Hmm. Now, the graph of a raised to x will look like this. Amiens galaxy. It's greater than zero. The graph is going to be like this. If x is equal to zero, then it is one. So this is one. But if a is between zero to one, then the graph is going to be like this. Okay, so here we are doing some assumptions. Whenever we talk about exponential functions, following assumptions are there with us. Number one, assumption number one, A is definitely greater than zero. It is exponential function in real numbers is defined for positive values of A only. Is greater than zero limit it should be greater than one okay that is the basic assumption and there is a separate theory for areas to x the treatment for areas to x requires a lot of uh, fundamental things and we are assuming few things here. If we are talking about exponential functions in real number, then A is bound to be positive. For A negative, uh, we will be in trouble. How? Because X can take any values and if I take A is equal to say minus 1 and then I am suppose taking value of X is equal to 0 0.5 then I am talking about root minus one, which is not a real number. So I might be in trouble if I take value of A negative and therefore I prefer to have A greater than zero. And of course, therefore what we will get is Y will always be greater than, strictly greater than zero. Y is positive. Now, these two curves are going to be asymptotic as far as x axis is concerned. So equality is not going to happen in real. At infinity, they are going to be intersecting each other. So that is what at the moment we understand. And we will eventually draw many graphs where you will come to know the nature. 
how will be the graph if a is equal to 1 see if a becomes more and more greater than 1 the graph becomes steep like this it will be like this and the left side it is going to be reciprocal so it is going to go to 0 faster if a is becoming bigger than 1 okay and if a is becoming smaller a is equal to 1 will look like will look like uh, this horizontal line every time y value will be 1 okay and then the moment you take value of a between 0 to 1 the graph is going to flip like this and so on second in this is logarithmic function Okay, we will talk about inverse functions a little later, but logarithmic functions are inverse functions of exponential functions. And when you talk about inverse, you take reflection of original function in y is equal to x. Therefore, your logarithmic functions graph is going to be like this. That is reflection of this reflection of this in x is equal to y so this is going to be a greater than one function will look like y is equal to log x to the base a okay so a raised to y is equal to x. That is what is the corresponding exponential function of this logarithm. So if a is greater than 0, the logarithm graph is going to be like this and this will tend to infinity. This is going to minus infinity. As you go near and near to 0 x value, you go to minus infinity as y value. However, if your a is between 0 to 1, then the graph is going to be like this. Don't worry, we will spend good amount of time on these graphs eventually and we will solve problems also. So you will come to know everything. This is x is equal to 0. So a raised to y is equal to 0. And therefore, no, x is equal to 1. This is 1 comma 0. So when you put x is equal to 1, then a raised to y is equal to 1. Therefore, y must be 0. That is this point through which your logarithmic graph is passing through. So now because logarithm is inverse function of exponential, the rules that we have set for exponential get converted into logarithmic function as well. So what are the conditions in which we are discussing about logarithmic function? Let me write it down. But maybe I will pause for a moment. I mean, this the moment we write y is equal to log of x to the base a, we mean one a is greater than zero because it comes from here exponential function because see for all practical purposes y is equal to a square a raised to x and 
y is equal to log x to the base a. They are equivalent. They are one and the same. Now, see if I if I take inverse function of this, it is a raised to y is equal to x. So, but here the here the independent variable is y and dependent variable is x. But our convention is our independent variable should be x and dependent variable should be y. Therefore, we replace y by x and x by y, and we get this function. That is what we do when we actually sketch the inverse function. We make y is equal to x and x is equal to y. Y by x and x by y, and therefore we get graph exactly mirror in y is equal to x. Y is equal to x. If you mirror this particular curve in y is equal to x, it will look like a is to x graph. It will pass through this point, and that is how it walk happens. Okay. So these guys are equivalent. They mean exactly same thing. Y is equal to a is to x, and y is equal to log x to the base a. They mean exactly. Therefore, first condition a must be greater than zero comes from that exponential. Second condition. Is x must be greater than zero. You can see the entire logarithm graph is to the right of y-axis. Why? Because exponential y is always greater than zero. So y takes, I mean, y in exponential is x in logarithm. Therefore, second condition is you cannot afford to write like this: log of minus fifteen to the base ten. This is I mean, this is illegal in real numbers. This is not acceptable in real numbers. Your x value must be strictly greater than zero. Okay. And the third condition here is a should not be equal to one. Now, obviously, this condition is not present in exponential because I have drawn the graph of a is equal to one here. It is a horizontal line passing through zero comma one. But when I reflect that line in y is equal to x, it becomes a vertical line over here. When a is equal to zero, a is equal to one, it is a vertical line passing through one comma zero. And vertical line is not acceptable as a function at all because it uh, does not satisfy the vertical line test. It is, I mean, there are more than there are infinitely many points. Therefore, this additional condition. So you need to be aware of these three conditions when you write a logarithmic function. Now, because we are discussing functions in real numbers. If you start discussing functions in complex numbers, then maybe these rules are not applicable because you are allowed to write those complex roots. But our entire differential calculus, the syllabus that we are going to study, is for real numbers. It's a real analysis that we are going to study. Therefore, the moment we end up in a case where Non-real quantities start existing. We are not supposed to deal with them. Any questions? No. I cannot see. Sometimes I just keep talking and not see. Okay. Some special functions. One. Absolute value function. We know, we know this. Y is equal to mod x is defined as x if greater than equal to zero is equal to opposite of x if Less than if 
x is greater than We have already drawn the graph of this function earlier in our life. But to complete notes, you have to draw a sketch here. Nothing additional about this function. Next, signum function. I remember having taught you these functions in so many a classroom when you were about to write PRMO. But over it, I told them a lot in my parents at them a guy put me signum y is equal to SGN of X is like this. This is one comma zero comma one. This is zero comma minus one. This is zero comma zero. Then you have function looking like this. When x is greater than zero, value is one. When x is less than 0, value is minus 1. When x is equal to 0, value is 0. So, y is equal to sgn of x is defined as actually mod x upon x. If x is not equal to 0 and equal to 0 if x is equal to 0. Signal function. So you'll have to just see the value of x. If it is positive, answer is 1. If it is negative, answer is minus 1. If it is 0, answer is 0. So it is a nice function. Question. Draw and show. Graph of. Signum mod x minus one y is equal to. Chala, you mala thara kai thik kam mila. Hatha na taruna ancha hatha la kam mila. Chala. Okay, this graph is going to be. So what you are supposed to do whenever you are asked to draw the graph. You are supposed to put different values of x and get the different values of y and try to connect them. So if we put x is equal to plus 1, we get signum of 0, which is 0. Here, this is x is equal to 1. Similarly, for x is equal to minus 1, you will get 0. Okay. If you put any value of x greater than 0, so we are talking about this, then this bracket is going to be positive and signum of positive number is 1. Here you have a hollow circle and all, val all values are going to be this. Very good. If you have value of x positive but between 0 to 1, this is 1 then this bracket is going to be negative. Signum of negative number is minus one. So you go here, from here to here, it will be minus one. Same will be the story from here to here because absolute value of x really does not. When you have absolute value of x inside the function, the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to y axis. And therefore it is going to be like this. Or you can, scan from left to right. Now, few of you are making 
I mean, see, you are ignoring this. You are just putting it as a dot like this. It is not visible. Unless and until you are sure that this point is to be included and therefore none of the points above will be part of the graph. You have to have hollow circles, dark circles properly mentioned. Next question. Okay, next function. The greatest integer function. denoted by this rectangular bracket x indicates the integral part of x which is the nearest and smaller integer to x okay so i think we have dealt with this earlier and typical, typically when you are supposed to be careful, greatest integer of 5.7 is equal to 5, easy. But greatest integer of minus 5.7 is equal to minus 6. You need to be alert. Fractional part from okay, so maybe you can sketch greatest integer function just to complete your notebook here. Greatest integer function will look like what? Step function. If it is zero, zero is an integer. Nearest and smaller than x. So if it's zero, then you go from here to one. Go up when it is one, you get up, go to two, and you go here, p zero at minus one zero. And so so this is greatest in the Fourth is fractional part function. y is equal to fractional part of x which is x minus greatest integer x and the sketch of fractional part of x will look like Okay. So now few questions.
greatest integer x is less than or equal to x when is the equality equality when x is integer greatest integer x is less than equal to x is strictly less than greatest integer x plus 1 i mean these are not questions these are the properties or things that we keep ready with us as far as greatest integer is concerned then greatest integer of x plus y is equal to greatest integer of x plus y if complete this statement x plus y greatest integer of x plus y is always going to be greater than or equal to greatest integer of x plus greatest integer of when y is an integer find values of x such that or maybe i can call you solve the greatest integer function of x square is greater than or equal to 4 so now we have values with the tomorrow recording Greatest integer x square is greater than equal to four implies x square greater than equal to four implies x less than equal to minus one or x greater than equal to four. Now I think we had done this in ninth standard, but let me just give you once again so that you don't make any error in subsequent problems on greatest integer function. y is equal to x square zero one two three minus one minus two minus three one one two three four five six seven eight nine. Okay, so using different colors, let me just write sketch y is equal to x square. Hmm. Now, at integer values of you are supposed to make horizontal lines dash lines this is one y value is two y value is three y value is four and so on. okay so if you are so this point now first point you consider 1 comma 1 all y values are between 0 to 1 so if x is between 0 to 1 y is between 0 to 1 and therefore 0 is a part of greatest integer and all this green curve will come and settle at this place this dumbbell 
at this dumbbell one, it will jump over here. And then till you have next intersection. Oh, maybe these intersections, what you get, you can make them all dark circles because they are going to be the part of final answer. Okay. So you come below from this dark circle over here, make hollow circle and complete the dumbbell. I have a facility of making it bigger. Okay, this is a standard procedure to deal with greatest integer. So you come below from this dark circle, make hollow circle, make a dumbbell. Come below, make hollow circle, make dumbbell. Come below, make hollow circle, dumbbell. And it is going to be exactly come below. Maybe here it should be a hollow circle, dumbbell. Come below, vertically hollow circle, dumbbell. Hollow circle, dumbbell. Yes, Namaste ka. Graphically, maybe sometimes you can solve it quickly. This is one, two, three, four, five. And then you are supposed to, in this particular question, so I, I made it read everywhere, but I think you understand what is the graph of y is equal to greatest integer x square. And you want this to be greater than equal to 4. So you draw a horizontal line at 4. And check what values of x will give you all values of y greater than or equal to 4. You will find that first is going to be 2 or more than 2, minus 2, or less than 2. Again. That is how you are supposed to deal with greatest integer function. So steps, draw original function, draw horizontal lines at integer points on y axis, make those horizontal line with curve intersection dark circles, from that dark circle go down and till you reach the next integer line, make it hollow. I think it will work for you every time. Let us see. Greatest integer function x square is less than or equal to 3. What is the solution set? Where are you? Yeah. Where are you? Ah, Chana, I have made the graph for you already there, and you just need to write down the solution set. All the hard work is being done by me. What is your answer? Sir, one minute. Chinmay Zoshi, not correct. Ayande, not correct. Kastu, correct. Chinmay Kharche, not correct. Shaurya, correct. Yash Palve, correct. Manas Lebda correct, Manas Pandit correct. So now I assume that both are open interval correct, Palvi correct. Sandeep, Anish, Shreyash correct. Rajwal correct. Manana correct. Ayusha correct. Isha correct. Shaunaka correct. 
आदित्य देशमुख नाट करे समर्थ परवे करे पार्थ करे सायली करे शिवम करे चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अरे रिकॉर्डिंग वाज ऑन चलो क्वेश्चन कैन फ्रैक्शनल पार्ट ऑफ एक्स इक्वल टू वन आंसर इज नेवर कैन फ्रैक्शनल पार्ट ऑफ एक्स बी लेस देन जीरो आंसर इज नो वेन फ्रैक्शनल पार्ट ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो इफ X is integer. When fractional part of X is greater than one, not possible. Hmm. When fractional part of X greater than zero for all x except integers okay now let me give you another problem the value of i think this problem you have solved greatest integer 3 by 4 plus greatest integer 3 by 4 plus 1 upon 100 plus greatest integer 3 by 4 plus 2 upon 100 Plus dot 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 plus greatest integer three upon four plus ninety nine upon nine equal to for obvious reasons answer is seventy five. Next question. Why is equal to Two greatest integer x plus three. Y is equal to three greatest integer x minus two plus five. Find the value of. Greatest integer x plus y. Let x is equal to i plus n. Integer plus part plus fractional part, where zero is less than equal to fractional part is one, and the greatest integer function x is equal to i. Greatest integer function x minus two. Is equal to i minus two plus f. The two of greatest integer, which is i minus two. Y is equal to 
टू आई प्लस थ्री एंड वाई इज इक्वल टू थ्री टाइम्स आई माइनस टू प्लस फाइव विच इज इक्वल टू थ्री आई माइनस वन so solving these two simultaneously we get i is equal to 4 and y is equal to 11 so x plus y is equal to protect integer 4 plus f plus 11 is equal to 15 ठीक है